here with us this evening. Do we have any agenda additions or donations? Do you have an addition regarding student fees? And that could take place uh, probably most appropriate for Section K of curriculum instruction and assessment. Do we have a motion to add student fees under the motion to add student fees? I'll second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And opposed? Motion passes. Student fees will be listed as number four under K, curriculum instruction and assessment. I'm Dennis Keithley. I taught in the school system for 34 years. I retired 21 years ago. And in my opinion, the Indiana legislature has damaged public education in Indiana during those 20 years. I rise in support of the Tri Creek Teacher Association in their bargaining of salary and working conditions. Um, this week I hosted a meeting of 30 retired teacher leaders in Northwest Indiana. And each of them expressed the same thing about when they talk to new retirees. And it's become a job and not a profession. They are faced with so many challenges that when they get out or retire from teaching, they don't even want to join any retired teacher organization they've had. It, it was different when I was teaching. It was viewed as a profession and those in the profession were there to stay. Now it's viewed by too many as a stopping point or a point to, to rest and find out what job you're going to move to next. So I support anything you can do to help the salary of teachers in Tri-Cree as well as the working conditions. And I know you feel the same way, but this is a statewide, actually a nationwide issue. Mm -hmm. and it's upsetting to me of how much things have changed since I retired 20 years ago. And that's several of you as students. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak for the public hearing? I think um, just since the public hearing the superintendent. <laughs> Uh, I think it's important for the community and the teachers union uh, to know that um, I've observed this board um, and I'm in, in their uh, actions and in, in, in their conversations, they are extremely supportive of you. And I, I believe we are all united to do the, the best that we can given the cards that we're dealt. We are committed to do this. I don't know if there's anything else that you all would have. That is the truth. 100%. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Keeley, for bringing attention to the fact that it's not a local issue. It is a grander state and national issue. And as a board, we're going to do what we can. We know we had the failed referendum and that we have to move forward from that. And so we're going to move forward as best we can with all those cards on the table, local, state, and national. But we do fully support our teachers and staff and we want to make it as best as we can with what we have. And it, it was also noted you still have that same fire that you had back 20 something years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So closing the hearing, closing the public hearing of the Treasury Teacher Organization and Treasury School Corporation. Firework. 
first display, I believe it's on senior night, or? No, it's their last uh, game. And so um, it, it is a generous donation, so I just wanted to make the board aware if you hear from community members that, why are they doing spending all this money on fireworks? <laughs> it, it's at the generosity of one of our parents, and um, I'm sure he's prejudiced towards the, the um, soccer team because his daughter's on it, and so if there's jealousy amongst basketball or football, um, you know, tell your parents to grow up and, <laughs> and don't just play. He has, uh, Thomas provided us with a contract, he's fully licensed, he jumped through all the hoops with the state fire marshal, and we're just tying up some loose ends um, with our business department and insurance. And, um, well, fireworks go off with football touchdowns, so I don't see why soccer can't get some celebration too. I don't know if I can do this. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for your generosity. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So our business department will be in touch about forming up those loose ends. Okay. Uh, the other item to report is we'd like to put together a school town hall meeting again and do another series the school year. And so I just interested if you had any potential topics that you think the public might be interested in. Public? Any ideas? <laughs> um, yeah. But I need a minute. We, we can always just have an open forum, and as you get, we've got some capital improvement projects going on, and we can certainly have a whole display of information and items to that. But if there's a hot topic out there, let me know. Do have a staff recognition. Um, the fifth grade Lake Prairie team on the campus of Wool Middle School was recognized by a community person and a colleague um, for providing their child such a quality experience on the campus of Wool Middle School, despite being away from Lake Prairie. Uh, really complimentary. Of the the, all the teachers and the support aides that were out there. And so this past week, we went upstairs and did a, a set recognition ambush. And there are a few teary eyes, and it meant a lot to them. So uh, the fifth grade Lake Prairie team of teachers and uh, instructional assistants were recognized. Thank you. Yeah. 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 You know from experience, they are a great on the NYSEC school or report. Um, we had a meeting last night. Uh, the majority of the discussion focused on personnel, people leaving the NYSEC and looking for jobs other places. Um, there were probably 20 positions in jeopardy. Uh, they filled all but two of them, so that's a very positive thing. Uh, the fillings were based on uh, elimination of positions and merging responsibilities to several employees, and as a result, there were stipends that went along with it, and it did affect our school as well. Um, another big topic was the Medicaid reimbursement. This year we did good. However, there is a requirement from the government that all Medicaid recipients have to refile all their paperwork in order for us to get reimbursed for the services. If they fail to do that, it will jeopardize funding. So there was an urgency to ensure that all schools uh, notify the parents to make sure that if they are in fact on Medicaid, they refile all their paperwork. So there was uh, an additional 344 some thousand dollars that has been obtained in the past two years, or since just two years ago. With COVID. Um, and so, Yes, that is a very smart move for schools to do. Mm -hmm. and, but it's getting people to reapply. Right. And that's all. Yeah. 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 Thank you for your update on my set. Regular business consent items. Number one. Oh. 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 O
Um, all right, and number one, we're gonna approve the minutes of the meeting held on Thursday, August 10th, 2023. I'll, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from August 10th. Second. I have a motion and a second. <clears throat> all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. The motion passes. Number two, approve the payroll and claims. I'll make a motion to approve the payroll and claims. I'll second. Very briefly, this parallels what we have in our Title I programs at the elementary school. So there's a difference in terms of what your certification is, whether that's having a teaching license or in the case of the English language program, the state required that they score a certain score on an English language teacher of record rubric. So we have um, now following suit with that to make sure that we have everything in place. Um, folks that qualify under that, which would then parallel the do at Title I because of that additional um, licensure and the rubric. So we wanted to create the job description as such, and you'll notice in the personnel report we have an additional person that meets those requirements. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve the new job. I have a motion. I'll second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passed. Number two, approve the personnel report dated Thursday, September 14th, 2023. It is a lengthy one. I'll make a motion to approve the personnel report. Do you have a motion? A second. And a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Number three, approve Alexander Beck, Anna Kreitz, Eric Tarnowski, and Roberto Whaley as Lowell High School band clinicians for the 23-24 school year. I'll make a motion to approve the high school band clinicians. I have a motion. A second. And a second. All those in favor? What, right. is, what, what is a clinician? What's a band clinician? So they will work, uh, let's say, specifically with woodlands or grasslands, or they'll help to uh, write the formations for you know, the marching band, the color guard, very specific. And these are currently teachers that are? Here. So Tarnowski is a teacher. Uh, the other person is not Kreitz. Uh, I don't believe Anna works for us. Roberta Whaley is our uh, high school choir director. Okay. And so she's been the one been working with flags. Oh. And that is our middle school band. Yes. Okay. Very typical for marching bands. There's a lot of special. That's great that we have all of these people willing to yeah. take that time. So. Cool. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. We have some clinicians. All right. Lastly, number four, consider approving the employment of an individual under IC 20 26 5 11.2. Okay, so, this is the individual that we spoke about in the executive session that's required as new state law, and so we are recommending for. We're not going to name. Uh, the name is uh, late. Um, I have to look at it so I don't mess it up. Can I say it? Yes. Lindsay Berkey. Thank you. Right. Yeah, I was going to say, I didn't think it would be appropriate to just say this person, not the name. <laughs> uh, Lindsay I'll Berkey would be the teacher's assistant at Lake Grant. Mm -hmm. I made a motion. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. And opposed? The motion passes. Business operations. Approve the proposal from Touch of Grass Lawn and Landscape Service of Lowell, Indiana to provide snow removal services for the 23-24 school year. I'll make a motion to approve Touch of Grass. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Is this the same company as last year? Yes. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Number two, approve the donation of five Subaru engines to the Hanover Central High School Automotive Program. I'll make a motion for the donation of five Subaru engines. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Uh, just for clarification purposes, I think I read that we have used these engines 
um, and no longer have a need for them. So Hanover has recently started their program and are by us giving them the benefit of something to offer. And forward. Love it. Well, we get a lot of these engines donated anyway. You know? Yes, our yeah. instructor is doing an incredible job, and also Mr. Bess at the high school, incredible job of soliciting donations. It's, it's nice that they keep on giving yeah. to the other kids now. Yeah. Uh, all right, did I have a motion? I'll make a motion. I thought I made a motion. I second. Okay, thank you. All right, I have a motion <laughs> and a second. All those in favor? Uh -huh. All right. Opposed? Motion passes. All right, number three, approve the teacher appreciation grant policy. Yeah, so this is an annual formality. Uh, the state awards school uh, corporations uh, uh, monetary amount that goes towards the teachers who are rated effective or highly effective. It has a whole host of criteria, kind of divvy that out. We did, uh, we're not required to, but the good spirit of the team, we did uh, discuss with our teachers union how we would allocate those funds. And so, um, uh, if you approve this tonight, we'll submit it to the state, and then that once they approve it, those funds will come, and then we'll allocate it according to the policy for you tonight. I'll make a motion to approve the teacher appreciation grant. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Moving on to curriculum instruction and assessment. Number one, explanation of certified employee evaluation plan for the 2023-2024. Yes, yeah, so the entire evaluation plan was uploaded uh, to your board materials. It's also on our district website. There have been no changes since the previous year, and so we're recommending approval of that. And again, that will be then uploaded to the state as a requirement. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. And next is the Intermediate School Planning Committee update. What's your I know, I'm like, I'm so out of the loop right now. <laughs> So it's been a little bit since we've offered an update formally from our intermediate school planning committee. What I wanted to offer to the board tonight was uh, the presentation that we shared with our fifth and sixth grade teachers before the school year began on one of our staff development days. Um, one, of, one, of the, uh, one of the biggest things that we wanted to talk through is we've continued to use the analogy of uh, rocks, pebbles, and sand in planning and developing uh, a brand new school. So this was really a share out about the rocks, like the big pieces that we took last year to research, to visit schools, to discuss, and to figure out what really made up the bones and the architecture of the intermediate school. So uh, one of the big things that we had to decide early on is how we were gonna structure that. Was it gonna be more elementary models? Was it gonna be secondary models? Was it gonna be a hybrid of both? So what we've landed on is this TRIO model. And in the TRIO model, you'll see that you keep your four content classes, your ELA, math, social studies and science, I'm supposed to say up there. Um, and then the conversation around specials. So what's developmentally and age appropriate as a special course? Because we did decide that bringing up those was valuable. So we keep our gym PE, uh, STEM, because we still do have Indiana computer science and newly adopted STEM standards, and library to continue building that love of reading and ensuring that they're getting books in hand and going through the different skills that the library can provide. Um, another point of conversation is at what point do we begin to offer elective classes? So those that are not required on a daily rotation but are chosen by students, and what are those? So through conversation and through visiting other schools, we landed on um, the choice for both fifth and sixth graders of band, choir, and art. That's notable because currently um, band and choir are not options until sixth grade. So this actually extends the fine arts program down a grade level, which I think is a wonderful opportunity. Um, the art being more specific builds upon where it's kind of a more universal art appreciation class in the K through four level to a little bit more specialized at the intermediate school. So students would choose one of those three. Um, the homeroom is included in there for that team building, for those checking both at the beginning and the end of the day you'll see. And we maintained a commitment to recess being paired with lunch so that they've got play in addition to what's provided during PE. The reason we call it a TRIO model is based on our enrollment and based on our enrollment projections. 
our class is divided into three teams really nicely. So there will be an A, a B, and a C team. Um, our future principal, Ms. McCarrick, hates that I say one, two, and three, or A, B, and C. She'd like to make them a little bit more character driven, whether they're colors or creatures or whatever they might be. But there will be three different teams that are made up and provide students in both fifth and sixth grade comparable schedules. So that's the TRIO model. And that did come from inspiration from schools that we did visit. Um, while this is not set into stone, the next slide tells you an idea of our current daily structure, which is 390 minutes a day, of approximately how much time you will see for each of those different contents. The order does not matter. So looking at a beginning of the day homeroom for that check-in, for starting the day, for maybe some character building, and you'll notice that ELA and math are up there twice, 40 minutes each. Those are intentionally double blocked as your core content classes. We also have science and social studies with their own 40 minute block, meaning that every day of the week, every child will be in science and social studies. That's really important to us because um, oftentimes when it comes to intervention, or gosh, even coming out of the pandemic, science and social studies too often take a back seat where we know that there is a lot of learning to take place, a lot of relevancy and a lot of value there. This maintains that commitment to having set aside times for those that is on a daily basis consistent. Uh, you see that the special is in there. The rotation with the staffing that we have is a one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So meaning that I would have gym, PE, uh, or I'm sorry, PE STEM library, PE STEM library, PE STEM library. It's a model that we saw in one of the schools we visited to the east. We're like, gosh, how do you know what class you're going to? We went to the cafeteria, we sat down, the kids are like, it's easy, it's every third day. So like what we thought as adults might be confusing, the kids are like, oh no, no problem, we're, we're good with it. So that was good reassurance as we talked to them. Uh, we have a lunch recess pairing there, so dividing that 20 and 20, and then an elective period. The reason it says two to three days per week is that based on our staffing, we wouldn't be able to have that occur every single day. So if I chose as a fifth grader to be in band, I would have that like say Monday, Wednesday, and every other Friday, or Tuesday, Thursday, and every other Friday because they're sharing that position to make sure that we don't have to increase staff. When we talked about that with our art and fine arts instructors, like that is a wonderful gift because we're starting them at a younger age. And even though it might seem like two or three days per week isn't as great as five, to be able to have that much time with them at a younger age, we'll take it. The great benefit of that is on the day that I'm not in my elective, I now have 40 block, 40 minutes to do enrichment intervention and stay pure and true to that schedule that's above it so you're not pulling from any of those content areas that are above it and then we book we bookend the day with a homeroom for a kid wrapping it up whether that's some of our uh, PBIS programs we have the second step curriculum we've got some flexibility with those two homeroom times so that we're starting in the ending of the day with that kind of team structure all of this exists in that 390 minutes um, which is our current school day um, the other news is that while it's not up here, we wanted to ensure that with our staffing and with our licensure, um, Ms. Mulcarrick, Mrs. Stoll, myself, we put together what would be a master schedule for next year to ensure that the rotations would work and that we have the staff to do it, and it does. Uh, we did have like one kind of roadblock with ensuring that we had pure um, space for the intermediate school in the cafeteria and making that work with supervision and recess. We had a great planning session with uh, Mr. Anderson a couple of weeks ago, came up with a great solution to make that work in the middle of the day. So they're still staying within their intermediate school. How much time is allotted to get from point A to point B? To so, so we're not going to have passing periods in this. So it'll be built into those minutes, but it's gonna be guided movement throughout there. So it is a part of the block, but we won't have a bell system as planned right now for them just to freely move from one class to the other. That's one of those guardrails of the intermediate school that we're trying to kind of say, sometimes that's where like for our sixth graders, a lot of the disciplinary problems happen. So by putting that structure in place, we're hoping to lower the discipline behavior opportunities. Um, you've seen this already. This is the existing uh, footprint of the middle school, obviously. And it's just a nice reminder to see that we are still maintaining that separate tower or house structure where you'll have a seven, eight middle school house and a five, six intermediate school house with two separate entry points for parent drop-off, two separate offices. You're obviously sitting in what will be transformed into the brand new middle school office. And then the existing office will become the intermediate school office. 
You do see there some expansion to the parking lot on the south side of the building in the light gray, a new bus in and out route, which moves over to the west side of the building, an expanded bus loop, so that we've got drop-off opportunities there on the west side of the school, leading directly into the foyer. In the red dash, you'll notice that there are parent traffic signals there of where you would come if you were an intermediate school parent or a middle school parent. Obviously, we aren't going to press if a parent calls us frantically and says, but I have one of each. You can obviously choose. We won't make you go through the line both times to drop off for that. Um, one of the alternate bids is the extend, extended gymnasium, which is a new addition to the existing middle school. Um, but you'll also see to the east a hard play area, which has the proposal for full court basketball, um, swings, some seating areas, covered areas, and everybody's favorite, we learned, a gaga ball, which is kind of like gladiators for 10 and 11 year olds with a ball in the middle of an octagon. <laughs> I had never heard of Gaga Ball until we went on our site visits and we got to see it and the kids absolutely love it. So it's a little bit of soccer, a little bit of gladiator, a lot of competition. I think it's above even the middle school level. My freshman was looking at colleges for an assignment and he said, how do I find out if they have Gaga Ball at these colleges? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Is that, um, so so with, the, with the two offices, is there one uh, nurse or is there so there are shared positions that will be for both of them. So nursing is one of them, uh, guidance is one of them, attendance is one of them, so the, and the bookkeeper is one of them. So they are kind of, if you look where they almost touch in the middle where you enter into that foyer where you guys just walk from, mm -hmm. that's where their exterior doors are so they're easily accessible without having to cross paths into other offices. So they're strategically placed and easy accessible to both houses. Um, in terms of next steps, like using this, we actually just finished up our final meeting. Uh, Ms. McCarrick and I went around and visited with every fifth grade team because the most pressing question is, when we get away from the structure that we're in, what am I going to teach? Am I going to be an English teacher? Am I going to be a social studies teacher? When do we get to find that out? So we went around, met with every fifth grade team. We actually met with Michelle and her team at Three Creeks today. And we wanted it to be conversational, like talk to us a little bit about what you said as a team where you find your strengths, where your passion is, what you're hoping to get into, just so we could build some context around that. Our next step is to send out a form to them and say, like, if you were to prioritize each of the four contents, what would be one through four? And then even a little box there to add some comments. Um, I can tell you that from having those conversations, a lot of the puzzle pieces are naturally just falling into place. We didn't have 100% of teachers say, I want to be a science teacher. So because of that, we're going to now look at what the results of that are see where they place, and if we have some overlap, go back and follow up the conversation, kind of talk it through with those that are interested in the positions, and come up with a solution collaboratively together. That we want to have done by the end of September, early October, so that for the remainder of the fall, the winter, the spring, those people know what their role is, and we can start strategically doing staff development, um, release time, utilize future e-learning days, all of that so that they're getting to know each other, getting to work together. And when it comes to the pebbles in the sand, not putting all of that just on the committee, but starting to bring the collective 516 together and having them be a part of what needs to happen to develop the character to talk about curriculum. Those pebbles that are really gonna give the definition to what the intermediate school is when it opens up in 23-24. I know that Ms. Bill is really excited to host just a social event because as much as we've done together, it's been all driven by like academics and some heavy decision making. She wants these folks to just to get to know each other and have fun and, and break bread together. So she's working on a reception um, that doesn't have an agenda to it, but it's just getting to know you and starting to build that relationship and that bond. Because even though three schools are coming together and then you pull in the middle school as a fourth, we don't want them to feel like they're you know in silos. It's truly a unified intermediate school with everybody being on the same team. So that's where we are right now and where we'll continue to go. And Ms. McCarrick will continue to start giving that shape to the Pebbles and same conversations with the team. And we'll look at every opportunity we can after those decisions are made about staffing to bring those folks together. So I have a question. For the, um, let's use like a existing sixth grade science teacher. Mm -hmm. Are they going to be a five, six science teacher? So the way that it works in that is to keep them specialized, <coughs> they will be the only, science and social studies will be the only that actually split and teach both fifth 
and six. So when we have our three teams, to fill out that schedule, team A, five, will have an ELA, a math, a social studies, and a science. That ELA teacher and math teacher are double blocked, so that's their full schedule. The science and social studies will also teach on the 6A team on the flip side of their day, very much like the PE teacher will. So they will teach both 5A and 6A and have those two, but be specialized as a social studies and science teacher. Okay, and then when, let's say we have openings to fill, um, will we be hiring a general, somebody that's got a general background and can float to any position, or are we going to be hiring such a specific position? So we're looking like right now when we talk with the fifth grade teams, because we will actually need to move a current fifth grade, two fifth grade teachers to ELA math at the sixth grade level, because right now there's only two of them. Right. So we are, and have shared that we want the endorsement to be a part of that because it is specialized. Mm -hmm. So getting that math endorsement, getting that ELA endorsement is important to us. For the sixth grade? Correct, for sixth grade, correct. Okay, so like we're hiring for a fifth grade, that they can just be a general. Correct. Because right now they're technically licensed K through six, mm -hmm. so they could do it, but we know that as that standard and those content become a little bit more specified, like that's what we were looking to push for the endorsement and support somebody to, who doesn't have it to get it or to look at people that have it. Okay. Oh, one more question. Yes. The bell schedule. Mm -hmm. Does it go off in the whole building or are we going to silence it on that? Mr. Blackman is sitting across from me and can speak to some of the powers of the bells in the Lord Middle School. The easy answer is it's all zoned out. So okay. you'll have fifth grade will be separate of sixth grade. Everything else will be separate and we can actually make different areas do whatever we need it to do. Emergencies all across the building, um, but completely different bell times can completely different tones, okay. you name it. Like the Super Mario's tone? <laughs> if you so wish, absolutely. <laughs> We'll continue to keep you guys updated and share. And, and like I said, it's been um, a great like benefit to have so much open collaboration and communication with everybody that's been involved since the very beginning. So, thank you. And I think it's fair to say there's a lot of excitement. That's one thing that I've heard in fifth, like every fifth grade visitation we've had, is like I'm excited for this and I look forward to the opportunity and what's coming. So I see. I'm you. Not trying. Yeah. Looking at Michelle, I'm not <laughs> here to jump in. Yeah. We'll I make sure that I've got somebody who can back it up. Great job. We've got a really good team. We've got a really good team. It has been exciting seeing the process. And at this point, because at the beginning, it was not quite. <laughs> what did even have? Those, those rocks were They're real hard. rocky. So this goes back three years, so the year of COVID, when we started really looking at grading practices and recording and putting in a multi-year plan to make some substantial changes at the elementary level to the report card. I'll try to keep it brief, but I'm happy to answer questions that you have. Um, this is kind of a snapshot of what the current standards-based elementary report card on Skyward looks like now. It's been along for, before me. It, it predates me. And what you see is that while the, um, the, the belief behind the standard base has not changed and it's still extremely valued and it's what we want there, the functionality and the value added of this current template has not met its mark. Um, we were able to pull data from Skyward of the amount of parents who actually open and access and look at it, and it was in the 20% range for everything that we looked, meaning that 75 to 80% of our parents didn't actually open it because they weren't getting anything from it. I don't. I don't so, open it. You can see the limitations there. Again, the, the philosophy of the standards base is not what's flawed. It's what is the value added as a parent to give look to this. So over the course of a couple of years, we have made the shift to an assessment tool called Mastery Connect. This is a snapshot, a teaser, of what the new report card is going to look like. So you'll see that it has the student name on there. It has the tri -free branding. Most significantly there, filling up half of the screen are what we call trackers. So in a standards-based thing, the whole idea is how do I show academic achievement and growth over time? That's what the wheel serves to do. So on a four-point scale, 
I will see each quarter how many standards have been assessed with common formative or summative assessments in ELA and math, and where my child has performed at their attempts with those standards. So um, that wheel may begin with a lot of red and some yellow, because the goal in the standards-based format is that by the end of the year, I have mastered those skills. If the wheel were to be 100% green and blue at the beginning, that means that that student has already mastered the grade level content standards. So it's going to be a little a learning curve for our parents because our natural instinct is, my gosh, it's the end of quarter one, I see red and yellow, what's wrong with my kid? What do I need to do? Do they need to go to tutoring? It's going to be a lot about informing that that's okay. It's more about seeing that wheel change over time that we're really going for. So you'll see that for ELA and math in the center. Um, on the right-hand side of the report card, we have these different domains that are going to speak to other areas of the report card that don't have those core common formative assessments and common summative assessments. So currently, we have art, we have this lengthy list of learner outcomes, your specials are represented. This is the second page of the Skyward report card. Going forward, we will have a better representation on the side there We've changed learner outcomes, we've consolidated them, and we've paralleled the language that they see at the secondary level with what we call the agency rubric over there under work habits. So you'll get feedback as a parent about things like works through challenges, actively participates in classroom activities, et cetera, on that four point scale. Because we don't have those common formative assessments in science and social studies right now, they're still gonna be reported in a very similar way to what they've been in the past on a four point scale. But our goal is to look at opportunities to potentially create those CFAs and summatives so that they get their own wheel in that section as well. That's a, a future goal. You'll see that we have conduct and skills for each of our specials classes um, on that four point scale, very similar to it. And a new addition is sometimes our parents don't know the above and beyond services that our students are provided. So if they're identified in high ability, English language learners, Title I, special ed. So there will be a check for any of those that your student qualifies for. Title can fluctuate, that's why we put each quarter on there because you may not qualify until the third quarter and you can see the checkbox when that happens and then a traditional teacher comments box there. Everything, everything on the wheel it <clears throat> is 100% populated automatically from the assessments they're doing on a daily basis. Teachers don't have to enter anything to do that. All they will do is with drop down boxes put their specific comments in there for the other areas to populate that in real time. For many, the wheel is kind of a, a summary snapshot. What we're going to encourage parents to do is, value added by going into the online platform is you can see exactly what standards and skills make up that wheel any day of the week. So they would see, my student has mastered 80% of these skills. I could see that 40%, you know, so about halfway through the year, of these standards have been assessed. And if I want to look at how my child has performed on that first one, refer to details and examples in the text when explaining what the text says, dot, 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 they know that they have exceeded the expectation of mastery the last time they were given it because they're blue. They know that that yellow one there is an area where they were not meeting mastery, nearing it the last time they saw it. So for the parent that really wants to see, tell me what's happening in the classroom skill-wise, they can get this detailed breakdown, which is so much greater than what they could have ever seen with the Skyward Report Card. This is going to take a lot of hand-holding, um, and the best chance we have for an audience is parent-teacher conferences, which come up in October. So we have an e-learning day on Monday. A part of that day is I'm going to actually open up the report card to all of the teachers so that they can actually see how this is populating and get trained in how to enter information. Um, I also have an annotated copy of the report card, which has a script. And that script is, because we have almost 100% participation at parent-teacher conferences at the elementary level, a part of that conference will be going through five bullets of, here's the new report card, here's what you see, here's what you see. We want to equip them to have that conversation because we have the biggest impact and inform them the best face-to-face -face conversation. There will be questions. There will be confusion. Standards-based is foreign to us. It's like, just throw an A on there. Tell me that my kid is an A. Um, but this obviously does a much better job of showing that achievement and growth over time. I know what you're going to ask. I'm not going to ask. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to be about this because I love this. And I think um, 
the idea is that we're going away from for all elementary kids the A, B, C. And they don't have that now. Right, and they don't have that now. So everybody's used to us not having that. And I think when you say report card, as a old school parent, traditional you know, upbringing, we're expecting something that is the standard letter grades. And this is almost more of a, a progress report, a quarterly mastery progress report. And so I think semantics is huge, is huge as PR um, and making sure that the, the words we're choosing to, to deliver this fit. And or this isn't a report card. Mm -hmm. This is a progress, this is your progress on your mastery. And that's all we're concerned with. We are not concerned with ABCs right now. Um, so I think that might be a way to, to switch the traditional way of expecting us to get a report card to bring parents in a little bit more of understanding this. Otherwise, it's going to be, again, I feel like a little bit of that, oh, what is this? I don't know if this is going to do me any good. It doesn't tell me anything. You know? And a part, we know, like, the online experience is what our aim is, but we know that that takes a little bit of time to transition. So at the beginning, we will be printing. It's a two-pager and giving that to every child as we go through this first year, but we're gonna nudge and push because you get so much more. And quite honestly, to your point, I could check that wheel any day of the week and see where they are. Mm -hmm. I don't really need to wait for quarter one to right. see how they're progressing. Like if I know that they've taken an assessment, well, I can pop in and look. I get to use Canva now all the time with middle schooler, and I can see every day those, if I choose to, those things, and that's a great tool, and this would be very similar. Right. Does this have an app like Canva? Or is so it you actually access Mastery Connect through Canvas. Oh, they're, they are integrated out of the department. Yep. Okay. Yep. There's a button that you click and there's a parent portal for it. It does seem way better. And I'm curious. And I think the nice part too is that like it's awful to know how much time our elementary teachers had to put into populating the report card to have 23% of the people actually look at it. Like that's not good use of their time. To know that so much of this is going to cut back because it's automatically populated and the part that they put in should be done really quickly and easily, that's saving time, valuable preparatory time. So, and it's telling a better story, a more complete story. And I've heard there are some other nearby schools that are considering going this route. So we there. actually, um, surprisingly, when we have movements and get like transcripts or academic files, I've been seeing more and more of this. Like, I'll get a text from the school and be like, hey, got a Mastery Connect kid, and we'll see that. And it gives us more insight to what they've actually been learning and doing than if you just see pro progressing, right? So well, there'll be a lot that, of, that'll be a big talking point after the parent teacher conferences in October. I hear a lot, and I've got two kiddos who have gone through kind of our high ability kids, and I hear a lot, even with why does, it, why does the report card not say advanced? Why does the report card not say advanced? So this, if I'm reading it correctly, you'll be able to see. Oh, it will not. No? Here, here's what I want to say about that, and this is really important in standard-based grading. This is truly assessing, because you can see the standards indicators. These are grade-level standards, which is a limited fourth grade ruler. For a kid that's high ability and is doing fifth and sixth and seventh grade work, to be blue on here, there's no assessment, a common assessment on a fifth, sixth, or seventh grade standard because this is truly just living on that continuum of their grade. Those enrichment opportunities and how they're performing there, that would be a supplement to just how they're performing as a grade level expectation. So would I probably expect an HA kid to have a lot of blue and not a lot of green? Absolutely, that would be telling. For this four point scale, I always use the analogy of a basketball player to kind of understand the one, two, three, four. Um, for a basketball player who's never shot a free throw, like you get there, you hold the ball, you don't know where to stand, you don't know what to do with your arms, you kind of fling it up there, you're not making it. You are in the red. You need intense remediation. You want to set your feet and how to form it. Eventually, when you get your feet set, you start to push the ball. You might be missing a lot, but you're starting to get the mechanics down. That's nearing mastery. When we see people that are shooting consistently with good form and good technique, you don't have to make 100% of your free throws to have mastered the art of a free throw. No NBA player shoots 100% on free throws if you look at the back of their cards. But they, I think we would all say, have mastered the art of a free throw. What exceeds mastery means is, at that time, on that attempt, you were perfect. And that's not our expectation for you, but on that given day, you were perfect. You exceeded 
what we would consider mastery of that skill, of that technique. So then how does someone like this mind that's got a high ability class um, demonstrate, I mean, if most of her class is in the blue, mm -hmm. how do you demonstrate to the parents what else is happening in your class? And if the kids in the blue all year long on everything, it that wouldn't, might be frustrating as a parent. It, it wouldn't be through a common assessment at the grade level. There are those programs above and beyond, like Redbird Math, Redbird Language Arts and Writing. We're doing work with junior grade books. So it's going to be more about the conversation that happened, the teacher comments that happened, back and forth. But there's not a set assessment for those kids because you are differentiating what the enrichment looks like for each of them where they are. I think that a big report for them is NWEA. Because NWEA doesn't have grade level, but it can be a K through 12 spectrum, showing growth over time on that because it's pushing them above is a much better indicator of what I'm doing outside of the actual standards that are there. And that's three times a year, more reference, and you can look at that in the LAMM. But there isn't a set um, assessment for HA kids. We take the approach with HA like depth, complexity, application, you know? I realize that everything that needs to be happening is definitely happening in class yeah. to, to give these kids the quality and the higher level education they need, but to be able to convey that to the parents mm -hmm. and where they're at within those higher mobility um, sure. things. It, you know, and I know, I, we've talked about this before, um, it's not blooms anymore, it's whatever they're doing. Depth of knowledge. Yeah, yeah depth of knowledge, so it would be, cool if there was a way somewhere to maybe even mention that, you know, to the parents. I'm sure it's too late to for it's, that, but. It's like because each of those standards is a set, like standards you'll see on this will be DOK1, depth of knowledge one, all the way up to four, even though they're grade level. Mm -hmm. So it's really about that sprinkle that you're doing to push and enrich to make sure that I'm hitting my growth goals on something like an NWEA, or even at K2 and 5 when they're taking that cognitive ability test. Those are going to be good indicators of like what we're doing is working because they're meeting growth projections and targets. Any other comments or questions? Yeah, Jennifer. Um, so we added number four student piece. Yeah, so you'll notice I'm not passing anything out to you because it's pretty simple. The board previously approved student fees for students in grade six, nine, and any new student, the fee for the uniform, as well as the locker lock. Schools across the state have been asking the Department of Ed all summer for an interpretation of no textbook fees. So not being able to assess parents for curricular materials and items. Well, the PE uniform, if you read through all of the guidance documents at that time, gave no indication that a PE uniform was tied to curriculum. Last Friday, though, a clarifying document came out that specifically said if your PE gym uniform is required to participate in the class, then you may not assess it. Currently, we do require the PE uniform um, primarily to avoid the whole, oh, you brought shorts that are too short, or you needed this, it just takes that away. So, we're in a position now, the recommendation is to uh, redact the fee for the PE uniform. And when we ran our numbers for the PE locker lock, this school year, we'd like to redact that as well and just make no fees, do a really thorough study this upcoming year. Um, there are some schools that are uh, being very creative in the fees and that could end up in court. So there's a, a lot out there to determine what the future of this, but uh, the recommendation is for student fees to be zero for the 2024 school year. And the item to note is parents who still have not fully paid 
their previous year fees are still obligated to do so. We have not assessed, I'm looking at Jay because we did not assess, push the bills out to parents yet, so there's no need to issue refunds. Um, we do have some cases where kid brought in a check or some cash to the bookstore to buy a PE uniform, so we're sorting through how to handle that, but um, from a Skyward standpoint, there is no refunding process either. Well, and if it's a replacement, yeah, if one's like a replacement, then they have to pay that? Correct, so we'll provide the first one, and after that, they're on the hook. What calls and says it's free? The for the PE uniform? It was $18, I believe. For uh, 15 to 18 per student. And then what the It was approximately uh, four to six dollars. Was that all locks or just PE locks? A locker lock. Lock. And to clarify, uh, student fees zero dollars. That may not include some of our high school students who are taking dual credit classes or have um, so fees associated with the welding. In the dual credit classes, if it is being taught by, and I'm reaching for the guidance document, if it's being taught by a high school instructor, which it is, obviously. Uh, let me pull that up here. I just want to have some parents who are going to reach out and ask some clarifying. Something I can get for you right after the meeting. Absolutely. All right, great. Yeah. <clears throat> Any other questions, comments, concerns about student fees? So, um, assuming there's board approval for that, we will put together um, an article or feature on the student fees in our newsletter that uh, slated to go out tomorrow. And it sounds like we'll include other items. Booster 
Club in the amount of $25,000 to help fund the Lowell High School Athletic ECA Fund. Number three, accept the donation from the Lake Prairie Elementary School PTO in the amount of $850 for the Matt Wilhelm School Assembly Program. Number four, accept the donations from the Three Creeks Elementary School PTO in the amount of $525 to help support the kindergarten study trip in the amount of $155.49 to help support the grade one study trip. Accept the donation from the Three Creeks Elementary School PTO in the amount of $324.12 to help support the grade two study trip. Six is accept the donation from Athletico of Wool, Indiana in the form of a box of school supplies to be used by Lake Prairie Elementary School students. Number seven, accept the donation from Athletico of Wool, Indiana in the amount of $20 to be used to help offset negative student meal balances at Lake Prairie Elementary School. Number eight, accept the donation from Kentucky Fried Chicken of Lowell, Indiana in the form of five $20 gift cards to be used for the Lowell High School Student Recognition Program. Number nine, accept the donation from Bullpen Inc. of Salem, Virginia in the form of two five-gallon pails of extreme CMT valued at $470.72 to be used for the Lowell High School Precision Manufacturing Lab. 10, accept the donation from Great Core of Portage, Indiana in the form of welding materials and consumables valued at $3,000 in support of the Lowell High School welding program. 11, is accept the donation from Jim Torberg with Weir Chevrolet, DeMont, Indiana in the form of a 2009 Cadillac valued at $8,217 in support of the Lowell High School automotive program. Number 12, Accept the donation from Kellogg's Mission Tiger, working with Strack and Mantell, in the form of gift cards valued at $2,400 to be used for athletics at Lowell Middle School. And last, we have accept the donation from the South Lake County Agricultural Historical Society of Crown Point, Indiana, in the amount of $350 to help fund Lowell High School Future Farmers of America study trip. I'll make a motion to accept all 12 donations. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Huge thank you to everyone who donates um, to our corporation, Big Health. Motion passes. Um, I would like to note that I passed over the public participation for number one. I didn't speak on it, but we did have no one signed up to speak um, in our first public participation. So in our second public participation on non-related agenda items, does anyone? Okay. Yes. So sort of like do school system, do you have to pay the welding fees and that as well? Is there, yes, all of the costs for the steel, lumber for construction trades, all of them. And where I worked at, I found it. Remember when I said it, it's being taught by a high school? It's because that's the way it's worded. The cost of curricular materials for dual credit courses taught in a high school using high school instructors must be provided to students free of charge. But don't some of the fees for dual credit go directly to the university that's providing the dual credit? We cannot can't speak to the actual earning of the credit, but in regards to curricular materials, we cannot charge. So it would be up to, I believe it's accurate to say, up to the family of whether or not they would like to apply for the credit. But that would go to the university. Yeah, correct. Right. And if memory serves, isn't there like an italic line that it's like, if the dual credit would like to provide the school the materials, that's between you and them. We haven't had people knocking down our doors to give us materials just yet. Um, the letter provided by uh, Gibraltar was for your information.
Other information, recap of the start of the 23-24 school year. So you all hear things that how did the school year get off this past month forward to this month? I haven't heard any complaints. I think that it's been great from what I've heard. Um, I know my sixth grader is very happy to be here. Um, it's doing very well and hasn't come home with a net anything yet, so I feel like that's a big win. <laughs> the, uh, the hack policy seems to be working on getting the high school and with the high school teachers. Um, the administrators are at least reporting that there are fewer battles and I have noticed that as I've been over to high school you see some with cowboy hats and some sombreros and people wearing sporting their favorite sport team so I did recently hear I know that the middle schools focused <coughs> on um, parent communications uh, this year and um, somebody who's um, had a child that kind of is habitually in trouble to it, um, did make note that our new administration is doing a great job of letting them know right away of anything that comes up. I really appreciate that because it's something that didn't need to be called for, but they called. And I like that. So Thank you. That's good to know. Mm -hmm. We've got the new cell phone policy here at the middle school. I spoke to Principal Cruz in the day to take out the phone. It's great. It's great news. Awesome. All right. Well, the next of the Frederick School uh, of Trustee is scheduled for Thursday, September 28th, 2023. I think y'all would